Hey, how's it going? I'm Spiderburger. Welcome to Character Design Cubby. Today I am turning random animals into humans. By random animals, I don't mean ones that like I just got from a random generator. These were just animals that I liked or thought of but couldn't really fit them into a specific group. Like previously, I've done dog breeds and cat breeds as humans, but these animals don't really have any commonality among them, but I just wanted to draw them anyway, so they're random. The first one we've got here today is frog, because frogs are neat. Obviously, there's a lot of green in her color palette. You might see that later on. There's also some oranges and some yellows. The orange is mainly on the shoes because frogs tend to have brightly colored feet and I just thought that was cute. I made the frog wear some very athletic looking clothes. Or well, not very, but athletic looking clothes like she's about to go for a run because frogs are usually characterized as jumping a lot. It's the main way they get around. So, you know, just give her some comfy clothes to run around and jump in. Why not? It made sense. A couple of things that I did to make her look like a frog character, apart from just the colour scheme, was her having her tongue stick out, just because I thought that was cute, but also her little hair buns. So you might not be able to see it very well just yet if I haven't gotten to the colouring stage in the video, but her hair buns are meant to resemble a frog's eyes because they kind of like bulge out of the head a little bit and she's got little ribbons tying them up but I made it so that one bit of the ribbon was bigger than the other so it resembled a frog's pupils. I just thought that would be a cute idea and it turned out really well so I'm happy with it. There's not too much else that makes her look like a frog and there wasn't too much else to her design either, it's very simple. I just wanted her to look pretty friendly and green of course. She's definitely one of my favourites of the bunch because while her design is very simple, it works pretty well and also because I just really like frogs. I think they're cute. What do you want from me? They're cute. I was also going to give her eyebrows that were kind of shaped like tadpoles because I thought that would be another cute thing but it didn't end up working too well so I decided against it. So the only real frog motifs she has are her hair buns and the tongue sticking out but you can tell Cell she's a frog, so I'm happy with it. She is frog. The next random animal I'm designing today is a goose. Now, I am not super fond of geese. They're not one of my favorite animals or anything. Honestly, I just find it kind of funny how aggressive they are for how small of a bird they are. It's, I don't know, it's just funny. It wouldn't be funny in person, of course, I'd be terrified, but funny from a distance. And that's the kind of vibe I wanted to give this character. Pretty angry, pretty aggressive, ready to fight. I had to do a mix of color palettes here of white, gray, black, some browns, and some oranges as well because geese don't really have set colors. There's different types of geese, different breeds, I guess, depending on where you are in the world. So there's not really one specific set of colors that I could have used. But I think with what I did, it kind of comes across well that this is a goose. It, it just works. I think I did okay here. It could come across as any other bird, but it's a goose. The little motifs that I added to make him look more goose-like are the nose being somewhat shaped like a beak or just a diamond which kind of reminds me of bird's beaks, the little tuft of hair at the top which is meant to resemble a feather, and his shoes which are orange like geese feet, as well as the sleeves which kind of resemble the way cartoon feathers are usually drawn. Goose has a lot of motifs here so He's pretty good on that side of things. The design is really basic. I probably could have added a few more details here and there, but I think for what I've got, this is pretty good. 
I should also mention uh, really quickly that for the line art here I actually tried using a different pen tool. I think it's called the Real G Pen and I adjusted a little bit because I noticed that in a lot of my art one of the things that upset me a lot or that I was unhappy with was the line art because I thought that the line width or whatever was too smooth so I tried something else and it works. Animal number three is Snail. Snail is pretty cute and she's also got a few motifs herself, namely the hair. I gave it a lot of swirly patterns and some hair buns with swirly patterns to kind of resemble a snail's shell. That just seemed like the most obvious motif I could do and it worked out pretty right, so I'm happy with it. Snail's design is another one that's very simple which I can't tell if I'm happy with or not. Sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. But in this case, I do like them. I made her the sleepy character of these designs because snails are usually pretty slow and I associate slow with sleepy. I don't know why. I just thought it was cute. In a little pajama romper thing, you can see on the ends of the shorts, the cuffs, I think they're called, I'm not sure. I gave them little squiggly patterns with some lighter colors around the edges. That is to resemble the base or underside of the snail because they're usually lighter on the underside and I just thought that was a cute way of representing that. I also gave her slippers partially just because, you know, she's sleepy and they didn't really have too much to do with the snail motif but I don't know, I just wanted to mention them, they're cute. Snail's colour palette has a lot, and I mean a lot, of browns and oranges and kind of like creamy orange colors like pastel orange and I don't work with a lot of oranges usually I'm not sure why they're just not typical color I go to but I think I did all right with this one I maybe could have improved with some of the stripes in her hair but generally speaking I think this one's pretty good she's one of my favorites Next up is jellyfish. Jellyfish, whenever I see photos of them, really look majestic, kind of because they have a bit of a glowy effect around them in the water, or they're bioluminescent, maybe. And I kind of wanted to give that vibe to the jellyfish character, but then I remembered that jellyfish don't really have brains, and I thought it would be funnier if I just made this character look like no thoughts, head empty. And that's what I went with. I did give her a dress that I almost kind of made look majestic-ish, like it's kind of a nice dress, but at the end of the day it just kind of looks more like a daily dress that she'd just slip on because it's comfy. I added little like uh, tassels, I want to say, at the bottom of the dress to kind of represent the like stinger tentacle things that jellyfish have. I'm not sure if that came across very well or if it just looks weird, but that's why I did it. There's also a lot of like little curved designs in the dress which are meant to represent like the jellyfish's main body or head bit. I'm not really sure what that is. Honestly, I should have learnt more about jellyfish anatomy before this. Her hair is also meant to represent a jellyfish with its shape. And jellyfish actually have a lot of colours, so I had a diverse colour palette to work with for her. I don't really have too much else to say about jellyfish. I think she's cute, she's got a nice design, and she is definitely not thinking about anything at the moment. She's just drifting about through life. Pretty big mood. The next and final animal I'll be designing, and hopefully I don't get in trouble for saying this on YouTube, is the Dick Dick. I'm not joking, that's actually what it's called. I know that sounds funny in English, but it's D-I-K dash D-I-K, Dick Dick. It's a type of deer or gazelle, that sort of animal. I'm not super familiar, and it's actually like really cute. So that's why I wanted to add it. I've just always thought it was such a cute animal. 
and to have a name that sounds like kind of funny in English kind of just makes it more endearing. This character has a couple of motifs that link it back to the animal, which I won't be saying anymore so I don't get in trouble on YouTube. Uh, namely, the hair buns, which I've been doing a lot this video, resemble the ears, and the little ribbons she's got with them are meant to resemble the horns. She's also got very long eyelashes, which the animal does as well. And I try to make her shoes kind of have like a hoof motif to them, but that's more so in just the colour. The colour palette was definitely limited with this one, and it was hard to get like the colour dropper on the reference images to give me good colours that go together for some reason. I don't know, it just wasn't working for me very well. They primarily have a lot of browns and blacks and greys but these colours are all like either really dark or really light and it's kind of hard to find a balance but I think I did okay finding a balance here this time. The only issue I think I have with this drawing, not the design, is just that I didn't draw the hands too well but that's just a me problem, that means I need more practice, not too big of a deal. I tried to give her a bit of a thin face shape because the animal also has a bit of a thin face shape, it like tapers in towards the nose, but I'm not really sure if that came across super well, either because of the angle or just because it didn't work, I'm not sure. There's not too much else to say about this little character, I guess we could call her Dee Dee for short and to make sure that I don't get in trouble, but you know, she's just about done and there's not too much else to say. She's definitely one of my favourites though, very cute. Thank you for watching this video and have a nice day. Hey, by the way, I have a Patreon if you'd like to consider supporting me. The link will be in the description. If you become a patron of mine, you'll be able to get early access to my videos about a week ahead of time, some extra artwork that you wouldn't get anywhere else, and if you pay a bit higher for some of the extra levels, you can get some work in progress updates, some shout outs in my YouTube videos, or even personalized shout outs where I read a message out that you send to me for everyone to hear. Check it out if you're interested. I also have a Redbubble shop where I sell various designs based on the characters and drawings that I do on my YouTube channel, specifically around the character design copy characters. You can get different types of stickers and posters, even some pillows if you want. It's up to you, but the link is in the description if you'd like to check that out. Thank you.